Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be doing another reaction video. This time it is to Anthony Padilla's video, I Spent a Day with Satanists. <laughs> Now I'm not a Satanist myself and I've always wanted to learn a little bit more about it and so we're going to be doing that together today. Now this video has been made by the amazing Anthony Padilla and I will link the video in the description box. All of Anthony's videos are absolutely phenomenal. I've reacted to some of them in the past and I would definitely recommend checking them out for yourself if you are interested. This video, he is specifically interacting with Satanists. So we're gonna learn a little bit together. I will interject any information as and when I can, depending on what they're gonna be talking about. Because although I don't know a huge amount around Satanism, I'm gonna be interested to see if there's any crossovers between what I personally follow and practice and what they personally follow follow and practice. I'll be really interested to see if there's any crossovers and where there is, I will be interjecting that so that you can get a little bit of extra context. As usual, I never intend anything negative towards the people in this video or Anthony Padilla for creating it. My job here is simply to add a little bit of extra context and information into the videos as a practicing witch and someone who's just generally very interested in these kind of topics. I never put the full video in my video, so I would thoroughly recommend checking out Anthony Padilla's full video. As I mentioned earlier, it's linked in the description box. I do have other reaction videos that are more witchcraft centric, so if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, I will put some in the the card up here for the playlist and with that all being said let's get started i will however shuffle over because if i don't shuffle over and put the video in you're going to be really confused as to what i'm looking at so i'm probably gonna do that first and then let's start watching before we fully dive in i feel as though i need to catch you up a little bit on what we've already learned about satanism we've done previous videos on the topic where we've learned together and generally satanism is a tradition that is more atheistic in belief usually the people who follow the satanist tradition do not actually worship the devil as it's maybe perceived within christian traditions instead it's more of an atheistic tradition all about free will and the ability to make decisions for ourselves rather Rather than relying on higher powers to do it for us. So I'm going to be really interested to see which forms of Satanism they're going to be talking about and which kind of path they're going to take because it is a very controversial topic and most people don't want to talk about it. And so the fact that Anthony has decided to make a full video on his main channel talking to actual Satanists is a big step in the right direction. There are so many people who are very frightened of Satanism because they don't truly understand what it is. And in my experience, the best way to fight fear is with education. And so to have a video like this being published with Anthony's platform is hopefully going to be absolutely amazing for teaching the people who are interested about what Satanism really is from the people who practice it. Because as being part of the witchcraft tradition, I know firsthand that so many people have misconceptions about witchcraft that they've learned from media, fantasy. They've not thought to learn from actual practitioners. Instead, they believe what they see in movies. And I suspect something similar will likely be the case within Satanism. My name is Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with Satanists to learn the truth about this highly controversial religion and belief system with members assumed to partake in extreme rituals and sacrifices. By the end of this video, we'll witness what Satanist rituals really look like and why Satanism is so highly controversial. Are Satanists people who use the idea of Satan to celebrate free will, self-empowerment, and rebellion against traditional religion? Or are they really the worst of what people assume them to be? devil worshippers who derive pleasure from harming others. Hello, Michaela. Hi. Jax. Hi. Reverend Richard Lale Lillard. Hello, Anthony Padilla. How are you? Can we just, just be in awe of this gentleman's amazing attire. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, they look amazing. The tie with the beads, with the brooches, with the top hat, with the sunglasses, with the mustache, that is an amazing look. I think I'm gonna be distracted this entire video by just how cool <laughs> they are. That is absolutely amazing, okay. I'm gonna get back to the video now, but by golly, these people have style. 
How long have you been Satanist? Four years. 17 years. 20 years. When many people think of Satanism, they imagine naked people performing a ritual around a fire, chanting in tongues, sacrificing an animal while making a blood oath to Satan. How accurate is that image? to what you do. Well, we only do some of those kinds of things. Nudity, dancing around a fire, dancing naked outside, orgies, but uh, no <laughs> sacrifice, no human sacrifice, no animal sacrifice, nothing like that. What do you think is the biggest misconception about Satanism? They think that Satanists wear red shoes because we kill babies to stay looking young. And I will tell you this, I love children. I can just never finish a whole one by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I absolutely adore this gentleman. Just the sense of humor is just absolutely phenomenal. And you really need it as well. If, if you're going to, especially if you're going to be talking openly about something like Satanism, similarly with witchcraft, you really have to be able to take a joke and to dish them out as well, because otherwise it can get really dense and it can get really intense. And so the comedy that's going on here, the lightheartedness, is really, really good. And I think for the audience as well, it's gonna really help brighten the mood. But I mean, so far I'm seeing a lot of similar stereotypes to witchcraft. Now, obviously Satanism and witchcraft are not the same thing, but they both have very similar stereotypes that are perpetuated to this day. The idea of dancing naked outside and orgies and sacrifices and eating babies. Genuinely, you would be surprised how many times I have been told that I am going to burn in hell because I eat babies. You would think that these kind of things are not still problematic stereotypes that are being passed around, but they still exist. And so it's really nice to see like that openness, like similar to witchcraft, you do still have the bonfires and the naked dancing, but it's not as dark and as secretive and as nefarious as is probably perceived. And so I really like this, this comedic addition into it. It just makes it a little bit lighter, brighter, like Satanists are no different from anyone else. And it's very likely you've probably met Satanists and you just didn't realize that they were Satanists because they simply didn't tell you. You can't spot a Satanist by the way they look unless they're fabulous, like we see in this video. You'll often never notice that you've experienced a conversation with one in the past. And so it's, it's really interesting to me how two different traditions, two different belief systems in a way, have the same stereotypes, and these stereotypes are perpetuated through horror movies. I think we can all acknowledge we've seen a horror movie where this kind of stereotype is perpetuated. Literally any horror movie that talks about Satanism will merge together Satanism and witchcraft and make it some evil entity, when really it isn't like that at all. And so if you are interested in learning more about Satanism, I would always recommend learning it from Satanists or people that are educated in the subject rather than gaining information from movies and TV. And you would think that that would be general knowledge. And unfortunately, you would be surprised how many people still use movies and TV shows as documentaries, even though they are completely fictional. It's actually really shocking. So many of you people are offended, but I'm not. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Satanists do not eat babies. Atheists don't eat babies. Witches don't eat babies. We don't eat babies. Can you define what Satanism is to you? The values of Satanism that I identify with centers on free thinking and rebellion. I mean, even in a biblical sense, Satan presented himself as a snake to Eve and offered kind of the fruit of knowledge or the ability to be human instead of uh, strictly enslaved to God in this kind of bliss. It's interesting we have put in the framework of being uh, a negative, but I think it's actually been something that has been quite liberating. It's very natural to desire things that bring us pleasure. You know, the idea that we should refrain from that certainly should be up to us to decide. It is an atheistic religion where we don't believe in God or gods or demons or angels. For the most part, there are some who do but for the most part we do not. We do, however, view ourselves as a god in our own world, that we are the creator of our own. By nature of things, been given the ability to, to create and to think for ourselves, and then therefore we become 
our own deity, our own God. If everyone views themselves as their own God, then yes, it's selfish to an extent, but then everyone takes care of everybody else because we are all our own God. So they treat themselves with the respect of a God while also treating everyone around them with the respect of a God as well. When they deserve it. That's, ah. that's the, the caveat. Well, how do they so decide who you, deserves it? Well, there's there are sets of, of, of ideals. So basically it is, if you've ever read The Tenets of Satanism, it's very humanistic. It's basically, if I could boil them down, don't be an ass. Mm, I feel like I've been living by that <laughs> idea my whole <laughs> life. Have I always, have I been a Satanist? Don't be an ass. That's kind of the thing. And and even religious people, when you ask them, well, do you agree with this? Do you agree with this? And they'll go, yeah, actually, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that makes great sense. Yeah, I agree with that. Congratulations. You agree with the tenets of Satan. We're just going to throw them up on the screen right now. Just do a little quiz uh, and let us know how many of these you agree with. Is Satanism... A a lot of people have this misconception that Satanists worship the actual devil as we see within Christian tradition. And really, it's not. The use of the devil, or the term the devil and Satan within Satanism is usually a extreme representation of change, of self-control, in a way, instead of relying on a higher power to do things for you, you are essentially the one in control of your own life. And so if you have the chance to read the tenets of Satanism, as is mentioned here, I would reckon most people would perfectly happily live by them because they all make complete sense. You know, don't be an asshole, don't attack people, be kind to the people around you. Like, these are things that most people in the world will do as default. And a lot of people will do that for the purpose of being seen in a better light for a deity or whatever it is that they believe in. Whereas Satanists, because they consider themselves the main character in effect, you know, it, you don't have to necessarily refer to yourself as a god, but just the main character of your own story, you are doing those positive things to positively impact the people that are in your story, that are in your life. And so instead of doing good things to appease a higher power and to get yourself into some form of afterlife, oftentimes Satanists will do those things simply because it's the right thing to do. And I think a lot of us, if you are part of the witchcraft community, will have been asked this question by a religious person. They will ask, what stops you from doing bad things? And I always get really confused by that question because what stops me from doing bad things isn't a fear that I'm going to be smoted by a deity. I'm not sure what the technical term is for that. Smite, smote, smoted. Smoted just sounds really cool. I'm going to go with smoted. I don't do bad things to other people, not because I'm scared of some kind of godly retribution. I simply don't do bad things because I don't see any benefit in doing bad things. I'd much rather be a good person and follow my own moral compass. And that's essentially what Satanism is. It's knowing that you have the ability to take control in your life. And so by doing positive things for other people, you're helping them. And yes, in a way, you're probably helping yourself, but it's for you. It's not for a higher power, if that makes sense. Now, I want to make it very clear here that if you do believe in a higher power, that's fantastic. And it's up to you if you want to believe in that or not. But this is mainly focused on what Satanism is. And from the people that I know who are Satanists, they're absolutely lovely people, and I think so many misconceptions have led people to believe that Satanists are absolutely horrible. And actually, some of the nicest people I've ever met have been Satanists. Now, they might not be super nice people because they're Satanists, they're just nice people in general. And I think that's the main focus of this. It's about doing good and having respect for the people around you when they deserve it, like when they've earned that respect, simply because it's the right thing to do. Anyway, I've talked enough. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I've got to keep going. Otherwise, my camera is going to die. A 
religion or an anti-religion? It has all the defining features of a religion. So it has like a set of shared ritual practices, a community, an aesthetic, certainly a very long history. It has all of those things minus the God element, minus the supernatural element. Satan means opponent, oppo opponent of. Even up into the New Testament, if someone was called Satan, it meant you're my opponent. So is Satanism an anti-religion? At its core, absolutely it is an anti-religion religion. Do you believe in a literal Satan? The guy <laughs> with the horns, with the wings, that's buff and red, or more so what Satan represents? I worship the idea of what Satan represents. I don't believe that there's, you know, a big guy with like red skin and wings and all of that. No, Satanism really just says, hey, do whatever you want as long as you, you know, you're not harming anyone. I do not believe in a literal Satan. Now, there are people who claim to be Satanists that worship a literal devil. I believe that if you worship a literal devil, that you are literally a devil worshiper, not a Satanist, because you don't follow the tenets of Satan. I don't believe that I worship anything. I mean, I worship myself. I was we all should, baby, come on. I would define myself as a Jack, Jack's worshiper. Is there a literal physical church or temple that Satanists congregate in? There are places where Satanists meet. I have been host to probably at this point hundreds of satanic gatherings. Uh, Satanism is still a very taboo and, and scary subculture to many people. So it's something that we very much have to do in secret. And when you meet up with other Satanists, is it someone standing in front of a large group of others saying, this is what you need to do, this is good, this is bad, don't do this, but do do this. If you do this, beg for forgiveness, that kind of thing? No, nobody is standing over us telling us what to do. I think that that is actually in, um, and typical to the actual practice of Satanism. Yeah, so that, that's a really good point there. Um, it's a lot like a secular witchcraft in a way, in that no individual is more significant than anyone else. It's not, say, in a, a classical hierarchy where someone is always higher than you and you have to listen to your superiors. Instead, everyone that is going to be attending a group for Satanism is essentially their own individual. No one is more significant than another. Now, obviously there are people who run the groups, but they aren't somehow better than or more superior than everyone around them. It's just, they're the ones that have organized it. That's about as far as it goes in a way. And obviously there are gonna be some who know the rituals more and who know the tradition more than others. But there isn't that kind of level of stereotypically superiority. That's a lot of words with Y's at the end. I probably could have said that in less wordy ways, but I hope you know what I mean. Like, there's not that sense of, I have this title, therefore you need to listen to me. Instead, it's more of a, I've done this ritual 50 times. If you would like to be included in it, then here's what you can do to help. And I think that's a really refreshing way for a lot of people. And you will find that a lot of people who come from more restrictive religions actually end up going to Satanism or to witchcraft in many cases because it is a lot more freeing. There's a lot more freedom to choice than maybe you might see somewhere else. Do you remember the moment when you officially decided that you were going to become a Satanist? I had been reading the Bible and I held on to it and I was like, but it doesn't make sense. And I don't believe like this. And I went, you know what? I don't believe in the Bible. And I'm more than just, I'm not atheist. I am an extreme anti-theist. I'm a Satanist. At the time, my boyfriend who was a Buddhist said, no, you're not, you couldn't handle it. And I said, I absolutely am a Satanist. He says, no, you're not. And I said, then you're not a Buddhist. He said, yes, I am. And I said, then I'm a Satanist. It's that simple. You don't have to be initiated or anything like that, right? Well, I'm going to tell you about my initiation. I put on a long robe and I went into this dark room and I lit this candle and I raised a dagger to the sky and then I put it down and then I brought my computer closer and I went, Google, how do I become a Satanist? <laughs> and then I drink my wine. <laughs> the basic thing about being a Satanist is if you adhere to the tenets of Satanism, if you, if you decide you're a Satanist, you are a Satanist. Can anyone become a Satanist? Yeah, of course. Anyone from all walks of life, no matter, you know, who you are or what you are, you can, you can become a Satanist. And how does one do that? Do they just declare it? Yep. 
I mean, I know it's, it's, it's not very sexy. Just believe it and you're good. Like, that's it. So yeah, that makes so much sense. And actually, I didn't really realize it when I started this video, but there are a lot of similarities when it comes to witchcraft. But what really got me there was the initiation thing. That moment of Googling how to become a Satanist is the exact feeling people have, and it's the exact process a lot of people go down when they turn to witchcraft. It's that moment of realizing, hang on, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to like join an organization. I don't have to like sign up for something. I don't have to give them all of my personal details. I can just do it. And a lot of people find that really confusing, especially if they are part of a religion or tradition that is very initiatory focused, where you have to like, they have your address, they have your name, they have your phone number, you have to go for a ceremony and you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to wear this and you've got to wear that. Now obviously within Wicca, if you are following, um, especially um, traditional British Wicca, so something like Gardenian Wicca, there are initiation rituals that you go down if that's the style of spiritual practice you're interested in. But because witchcraft is secular, it's non-religious, you actually don't have to do any initiation. Now, some people will choose to do a self-dedication, which sounds rather similar to what has been mentioned here, where essentially you are just proclaiming to yourself, to the world, if you want to, that you are gonna follow a witchcraft tradition. You, you just say it to the world. You might put on a cloak and go out into the wilderness and raise an athame into the air and proclaim it to the universe around you if you wanted to, and then drink wine and have cake and whatnot that's another option if that's something that you want to do but it's just very similar and I didn't realize how similar it could be in that aspect of just being like okay I want to practice witchcraft so I'm going to learn about what witchcraft is I'm going to learn how to do it and then I'm just going to do it and if I want to do it I'll do it and if I want to stop then I can just stop and it seems very similar in this where if you've made that decision that it's something you're interested in and you've done the research and you know what it is and you know what kind of things it includes, you then just one day decide, you know what, I'm going to do it. And you just do it. No initiation required. And I think that's, it's really refreshing. And I just didn't realize how similar that aspect of it was to witchcraft. Some people, many watching right now, I'm sure, believe that Satanism is a cult. Do you find that to be true at all? I mean, anything could be a cult. Um, has there been satanic cults in the past? Um, I don't know, maybe. There are defining features of a cult, um, and, and it includes kind of like this charismatic leader that everybody follows, kind of a rejection of consequences unless that charismatic leader defines what those are. Uh, you know, there is like an ice, a period of isolation. Satanism intrinsically like doesn't have those features. I've spent a day with an ex-cult member, uh, I actually have two, two episodes on, with ex-cult members, and one thing that has been defined is uh, this kind of othering, you know, there's, there's them, and then there's us, and we are different, and uh, maybe even we are better than. And also the idea that if you were to leave, there are consequences. And that seems to be what defines a cult in many ways. Is that true for Satanism? No, that's not true for any satanic groups that I, I know about. This is very voluntary for me. I've never been forced into this or anything like that, and I can leave at any time if I choose to. So there's no punishment for leaving or changing your beliefs or learning about something else and realizing that you align with something else more? It's totally okay if you leave. It's not like you're losing, you know, part of you if you do. I don't feel like knowledge in any way should be considered a sin. You shouldn't you know, be exiled for just wanting to learn about something. Everything that's been mentioned here really hits a chord with me, and I think it's mainly because I hear so many of these things from people who are opposed to witchcraft. A lot of people will say that witchcraft is a cult, or in this case, that Satanism is a cult, but I think it's really important to remember here that there can be cults in any community, and I mean any community. There can be Christian cults. There can be crafting cults. There can be book reading cults. Like a cult can appear in any community and it shouldn't be a defining characteristic of an entire tradition if one group of individuals decides to start a cult. I think that's the really important thing I want to get across here is that cults can be found in any community, in any sector, in any area of the world. And that cult 
shouldn't then cast a bad light on every single other person that follows that tradition. There's always going to be a bad 1%, and that 1% shouldn't then define the other 99%. And the one thing, the one big thing that witchcraft and Satanism have in common is that a lot of cults choose to use the imagery of that tradition to push their point across. So you'll, you'll see it all the time, even in like graffiti. Graffiti is usually always satanic symbols or witchcraft symbols. And the people that are doing this aren't actually witches, they aren't actually satanists. They are using it because they know that people already have this fear surrounding it. And so you'll find a huge number of cults and a huge number of just bad people that will use the imagery and the name of Satanism or witchcraft and they will use it for nefarious purposes. And it shines a terrible light on the witchcraft and the Satanism community, even though we have no part in it at all. And I think a lot of people seem to forget that. I mean, a lot of us, if you like true crime or you like kind of ghost hunting TV shows, will have seen it. There are some very large cases in the true crime community where Satanistic symbols have been seen at crime scenes, where witchcraft or occult symbols have been seen in crime scenes, and immediately the commentator on the video will go, oh, maybe they were part of a satanic cult, or maybe they were practicing dark blood witchcraft sacrifices. And I'm just sitting there going, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. Because the reality is, is that if you follow the satanic tenets, you wouldn't do those horrific things to people. And especially here, I've heard so many people say that witchcraft is a cult, I've heard so many people say that Satanism is a cult, and the reality is it does not have the very basic, identifiable features of a cult. A cult is the following of a leader that isolates individuals from their community, and as is mentioned here, sets apart this level of we are better, we are separate, we are other than other people, we are more significant, we do our own thing, we don't interact with society. Whereas within witchcraft, most of you will know, if you practice secular witchcraft and you don't have any kind of coven or group, you answer to no one but yourself. There's no one telling you what you should and shouldn't do, there's no one isolating you from the world around, and actually you'll find witchcraft in almost every sector of the world because it's so ingrained within society, it's not other. And the same can be said for Satanism, it isn't that the people are separate, they aren't isolating themselves in little groups. Instead they're part of the world, they're just following something different than what is mainstream. And so I think it's really important that as a, as a collective society, we need to be shaking the stereotypes that are being placed on groups of people that are completely fantastical, that they're, they're not real, they never have been real. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much in this video. <laughs> How is your daily life as a Satanist different from people who are not Satanists? Besides the morning bloodbath? Yeah, besides that. I don't know that my life is any different. I think the, as a public Satanist, I, I receive a lot of death threats as a, on, a, on a constant basis. That's that's different, um, and, and certainly because I'm a Satanist. But I don't think that it is different in any other way. Has Satanism affected any of your jobs or relationships or schooling? I remember when it got announced on my school campus that TED was coming in to allow us to like do a TED Talk event. I announced to the entire school that I was doing it on Satanism, and there was this audible like gasp. I had people who were slipping notes into my locker telling me that like I was going to burn in hell and that I was forever damned. They wanted me dead for what I was doing. So yeah, it's really dense and it's really heavy and it's not particularly nice, but I feel as though we need to talk about it. And that is that a lot of people who are part of the occultist traditions, now although Satanism isn't necessarily considered an occultist tradition, it's kind of adjacent, you know, it's, it's a more secretive, more private tradition that is a little bit more taboo, similar to witchcraft and a lot of occultist traditions. We will be told, primarily by religious folk, that we are going to burn in hell, and they will wish us death, and they will, in some cases, actually tell us what they, as individuals, are going to do to us if they find us. And I think it's really important to remember here, if I want to be treated 
as though the 1% in my community doesn't define all of us in my community, I am going to do the same to other people. So I am fully aware that the 1% of Christians, and let's face it, it is primarily Christians, it's not entirely, but for the most part it is, the 1% does not define the 99%. And I'm going to say that very clearly here because I am fully aware the majority of Christians are absolutely lovely people. I have nothing against them whatsoever. If their religion makes them happy and they're perfectly content with doing that, then they do that. That's completely fine with me. However, I think a lot of us within the community have seen the individuals that don't think like that. And it has to be talked about. So many people don't want to talk about that aspect of it. And as someone who is more in the public eye than a lot of witches, I get it a lot. And I think a lot of my fellow community members on YouTube will likely get it a lot too. And we need to talk about it. We need to make it a point to mention it because it's not normal. It's not acceptable. So why are we accepting it? So, and it, it's honestly really heartbreaking, especially this individual who did the TED talk at school to have fellow classmates that were likely once your friends send you death threats through letters in your locker, it breaks my heart because they do not deserve it. They don't deserve it for simply following something that's different than other people do. This sense of otherness shouldn't be the reason people are sent death threats. Do you know what I mean? Like being different doesn't make you bad. It just makes you different. And that's not a bad thing. It's not an evil thing. It's not something that you should receive threats for. And honestly, it makes me angry and it makes me sad that young people are experiencing this so young that they're still in school. You know, like I experienced this online because I put myself on the internet and this is the kind of thing that happens when you do that. But to have the knowledge that someone was just doing this at school and they got death threats really breaks my heart. It... <laughs> It really does. You were involved in the resurrection of a satanic monument. Can you explain what that was like? That happened when I was working with the satanic temple and it was a project that was developed in response to 10 commandment monuments at state capitals or um, at courthouses. The satanic temple came up with an idea to build a satanic monument and asked for it to be resurrected because of religious reasons um, in the same way. So essentially, if you have a monument to Christ, then you must also be able to have a monument to Satan, to mm -hmm. the flying spaghetti monster, to anything else. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you are uh, in violation of the Constitution. It has not yet to be approved to go into any, to be installed um, anywhere in any, in any state property. Mm -hmm. I organized the original unveiling of the monument, which happened in Detroit, and there was massive protests Literally busloads of, of Christians from Detroit came and were singing hymns and praying outside of the building where we were trying to kind of just check people in and there was a downpour and the Christians were like banging on all the windows and doors. The idea that somebody just merely having an alternative interpretation or an alternative belief system is an attack on and somewhat, yeah, and, and someone who disagrees. When it comes to what we're seeing here, I mean, you saw the imagery, the people standing with signs saying, God, something, not Satan. They don't understand what it is they're protesting against. And so how are you meant to protest against something effectively if you don't even know what it is you're protesting against? You can't say, oh, I don't agree with this if you don't even know what it is you don't agree with. If you're going to protest something, at least understand what it is that you're protesting. And especially when it comes to this, this statue goes on tours and it doesn't matter where it is, there is always a protest of people saying that Satan is evil and no one should worship him. And yet Satanists don't worship Satan. <laughs> so what are you protesting against? Because if you don't know what you're protesting against, why are you there? It's always my question. Education is the solution to fear in the majority of cases. Misinformation leads to further fear mongering. So 
education really is the key and and if you are interested in learning more about satanism i'll leave some podcasts i'll leave some links i'll leave some information in the description box because we really need to be spreading the truth about this tradition and try and dispel as many of those misconceptions as we can. Do you celebrate any traditional holidays from other religions? Christmas with my friends. I mean, just the yeah. act of gift giving, but not like anything beyond that. I do celebrate Xmas. Um, it's not my, I don't really enjoy it. Really though, in Satanism, the number one holiday that is supposed to be special is your birthday. <laughs> Mm. because it's about self. But celebrating others, that's fine. You can celebrate Christmas and Easter, and they all have pagan origins anyway. <laughs> it's not like Satanists are saying, don't celebrate Christmas because it has to do with Christ. If you want to celebrate holidays, celebrate holidays. It's really, what we do is about the indulgence of the self. So if it gives you pleasure, enjoy it. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And I actually got this question a lot when I posted my original Yule video, which is like, one of the first videos I ever did, I always got the question of, you're not a real witch because you celebrate Christmas. I'm like, celebrating a holiday doesn't define whether you are or are not something, especially if you are from a culture that celebrates that as part of its culture. I mean, right this minute, I'm filming this on the 19th of October, 2021. Right now there are Christmas adverts on the TV. It's the 19th of October. It's part of the culture of certain areas to follow certain um, traditional holidays. And Christmas is very heavily based on Yule. And it has its own kind of way of, of celebrating it that isn't religious. I mean, my family is not religious in the slightest. And Christmas isn't really a religious thing for most people in the UK. I'm not sure if it's the same in America, but of course, some people do find there to be a lot of religious connotations with it. But for the most part in the UK, there's not really that much religious aspect left to it unless you choose to add it. So, I mean, if you want to follow, even with witchcraft, if you want to follow the traditional holidays of your area, of your culture, of, of, your, of your location, you can do that and still be a witch, you know? I'm still a witch if I celebrate Christmas and Yule. I'm still a witch if I don't celebrate Yule. I'm still a witch if I hate Halloween. For reference, I don't. That's why I'm wearing <laughs> orange and black, because I love Halloween. But you are still dot 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 even if you don't do those holidays. You know, you are still a Satanist even if you do celebrate Christmas with your family because it's what you do when it's your family gathering for the year. You are still a witch if you don't celebrate every single one of the Sabbaths in the Wheel of the Year because let's face it, those Sabbaths have been mushed together from loads of different traditions when Wicca was created. So for Celtic peoples, they didn't celebrate the Wheel of the Year as we see it today. They, they had their own celebrations. You know, you have different cultures celebrating different things at different times, like you have Lupercalia, you have Valentine's Day, you have Beltane, you've got May Day, you've got Yule and Samhain and Halloween and Christmas and Easter and Imbolc and Ostara. There's so many holidays that you really can celebrate anything. And as long as your kind of core belief system is still in the sector that you, you follow, then you're still valid. Like, you're still a witch if you celebrate Christmas. You are still a Satanist if you celebrate Easter. It's more about your belief system, the way you think, the way you process things, rather than which cultural celebration that you do. I mean, in the UK, you can't escape Easter. Easter is everywhere. You know, you have Easter eggs in all of the shops, Easter decorations are everywhere. And for a lot of people, the religious aspect is gone, but for the most part, witches in this country will still celebrate Easter because it's just a cultural thing that we still do. And I think that's just really important to remember that there's more flexibility than people often think. If there's anyone watching who is deeply offended by Satanism, but is open to hearing where you're coming from, what would you say to them? Good, it's good to be offended because then it makes you think. And then you can start to read, read everything. Read your holy books, read things on Satanism, read things on atheism. Why not? What is it going to do? Yes, it can make you question your faith. But if you cannot answer as the Bible says to do, to answer and tell anyone why you believe, then you are not following the Great Commission. This is so true. I've said it in other videos when it comes to witchcraft. Question why. Always question everything that you read, everything you think, everything you do. 
Question why? And it's the big thing. I mean, I've said it multiple times in this video. Education is the solution to fear because more often than not, it's the lack of understanding that leads people to fear something. So if you want to learn more about Satanism, I will leave some links in the description box to podcast episodes, to books, to websites, to resources, to whatever it is that I can find that is recommended to me by actual Satanists so that we can learn collectively if you do want to know more about Satanism. If you want to learn more about witchcraft, which is what my channel primarily focuses on, I have playlists and videos and book recommendations and everything on my channel. And if you don't want to use any of those things, just make sure that you learn why. Question the things that you do, the things that you believe, the things that you think, the things that you are told. The more we learn, the greater our understanding of the world is. And that's a really, really good point right there. A lot of people, I have found anyway, in my experience talking to people, will alter their faith, their belief system. Because when they questioned why they followed it, the answer was, because I was told to. If the only reason you're doing something is because you were told to do it, and you don't really understand why you're doing it, you end up not really doing it in a way that's authentic. A bit like using indicators. I think in America you call them blinkers on a car. I think we've all seen those people. You know those people that use indicators, blinkers? randomly. And it's because they've been told they need to use them, but they don't understand why they need to use them. So they use them entirely wrong and annoy everyone else. That's kind of a similar principle. Not knowing why you're doing something, especially within witchcraft, is really hazardous in a way. So you could put together a ritual, a spell, and you've followed exactly word for word what has been written in a book or on a website, and you have zero idea why you're using any of those items. If you don't know why you're using them, why are you using them? Simply following a leader isn't going to gain you any kind of deeper understanding or meaning. It's really important to know why, and especially from a witchcraft basis as what I primarily focus on. If you're reading a spell in a book, make sure that you look up the meaning of every single item. You know, why is rose used in a love spell? Why is the colour pink associated with friendship, platonic love, working with children? Why is the moon significant? Why is the full moon significant? Why is the new moon significant? What's the difference between solar energy and lunar energy? Make sure that you are researching everything. And it's the best way I've ever found to develop your magical practice. It isn't necessarily to read thousands upon thousands of books, which, um, oops, guilty. It's also to question the things that you're seeing. So if you see a spell in a book, make sure that you pick it apart, figure out why, figure out where it came from, figure out why those words were chosen. If you're interested in following a specific religion, do a lot of research on the law, the folklore, the mythology, the, the teachings, the books, anything that you can find on it, and then question why you think it's right for you. And for a lot of people, they don't like questioning why because they're worried that they will suddenly feel as though they're floating, you know, they don't have a purpose anymore. But it's a very empowering thing to go, hang on, even if I don't follow that religion anymore, I am still a valid person, I am still valid, I am not floating, I am not purposeless. Instead, now that I know that it wasn't for me, I can find something that is my true purpose, that is what I want to do. And I think don't let the fear of free falling separate you from curiosity. Curiosity is such a beautiful thing. I know people say curiosity killed the cat, but I will remind everyone that's actually only half the saying. It's curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. And I'll be honest, I think that's a very true sentiment. If you're scared of learning, it's really worth pushing past it even just a little bit, just just taking, you know, five minutes out of a podcast just to just to learn a little bit more. Every little bit of information we can get, especially about traditions like witchcraft and Satanism, is going to help reduce the misinformation. And if more of the general public understood what it is versus what it isn't, we would have a lot less problems with death threats. We would have a lot less problems with people blaming Satanism and witchcraft for things that we had nothing to do with. And ultimately, understanding is really going to help people understand the world around them just a little bit more. 
All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. Follow me on Instagram at Castrated Angel. You can follow my work at JexBlackmore.com or on any social media network at JexBlackmore. At GentlemanPsychic.com, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube under Richard Leo Lillard or The Gentleman Psychic. Don't be a dick and subscribe to Anthony Padilla. That should be my tagline. <laughs> We're just going to take that. That's my tagline forever. Well, there you have it. I spent a day with Satanists and I feel like I understand the ideas and beliefs of Satanism a little more. It's clear that there's way more to Satanism than what's typically portrayed in the media. And while it's understandable to react with fear or even anger, it's a nice reminder to remain inquisitive rather than jumping to assumptions that could be based on misconception. That right there is the best way of describing it. Instead of jumping to conclusions that are misconceptions, it's really important to learn a little bit more about it. And I know that isn't exactly the quote of what Anthony said, but it's the basic gist of it. My memory is not that good, but it's, it's really true. And I will leave everyone linked that was mentioned in this video in the description box. So you can learn more directly from them if you really enjoyed these people. I'll also leave Anthony's links down in the description box as well as the video, because truly Anthony Padilla is one of the best people on YouTube that I've ever watched do these kind of conversations with, I spent a day with, because truly very open-minded and very caring about sharing an authentic version of the story. And I think a lot of people don't do that or won't do that. And especially when it comes to movies and TV shows, you'll often see that Satanism and witchcraft is used as a trope within horror movies to add extra scare factor. And the reality is, is that it's really dangerous to the people within the community. So the next time you're watching a horror movie and you see something about Satanism or you see something about witchcraft, do some actual research on the topics afterwards just to kind of balance it all out because genuinely I can't watch most horror movies that are based on Satanism or witchcraft because they spread so many dangerous dangerous misconceptions that can physically put people in harm's way. We've seen many cases of people being physically harmed, bullied, verbally harmed because of the misconceptions surrounding these topics. And if this video or Anthony's video or anyone else's video can just help dispel some of those misconceptions a little bit more, it's got to be a good thing. You know, it's got it's got to be better than nothing. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to put it down in the comment section. Have you ever heard any misconceptions about Satanism and witchcraft? If you have, feel free to let me know and everyone else know in the comment section, and we can have a chat about it, see if we can dispel some of the misconceptions within the community ourselves to just have a really open conversation about it because it's really, really important. If you did enjoy this video and would like to see other reaction videos, I will link them in a playlist up here. We've done everything from Satanism to Wicca to witchcraft. We've even reacted to some people claiming that they've seen witches. So that will all be linked up there as well as in the description box. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try my best to his magical content every single week. With that being said, I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.